Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering Red Hat Summit 2016. Brought to you by Red Hat. Now, here are your hosts, Stu Miniman and Brian Gracely. Welcome back to theCUBE here at Red Hat Summit 2016. We're just off the afternoon keynotes. Happy to have joining us one of those keynote speakers, Doug Fisher, uh, who is the SVP and General Manager of Software and Services Group at Intel. Welcome back to theCUBE. Thanks. All right, so uh, it's the third year we've been here, third Sorry. year we've had you here uh, on theCUBE, um, but uh, things have changed. Uh, a little bit of restructure going on at Intel. Why don't you give our audience uh, the, the update? Yeah, I, I think uh, a lot of people have heard about it. We've um, as a company, really feel like we're in a really great position, strong position to uh, make some shifts that are really important to intercept where we see uh, the industry growing. We, we call this the virtuous cycle of growth, uh, but really what that is, um, and it's a cycle, so there's really no beginning and end, but we have seen a big move uh, on the number of devices that are generating information and data. And obviously the data center has been re-architected using really modern techniques like software-defined infrastructure to mine that data, build data centers that are uh, modular in design that can actually deliver computing power uh, to get information from that data. And that, in turn, drives value for those devices, which in turn drives more data, and that cycle uh, continues. And so we're uh, shifting investments to the growth areas. Uh, the PC has been our predominant investment remains absolutely foundational and critical as one of the elements that's driving that information, but we're extending our capabilities to a broader set, including uh, the data center, obviously, and the growth there, along with the importance of new technologies, whether it's the 5G effort we're putting in or uh, memory and, and innovations. So all those elements, we're shifting investments uh, to ensure that we intercept that growth. Yeah, I mean, Doug, just like Red Hat themselves, you know, it's no longer just talking about, you know, Linux on the client or on the server, it's, you know, mobile, it's, you know, uh, IOT, it's uh, all the artificial intelligence and, as you said, computes everywhere. So what, what does that mean to the partnership of, of Intel and Red Hat? Yeah, the partnership Intel and Red Hat's been going on for over 20 years. It's, nothing's changed. I think it's just the technologies have changed. Um, we did start, I, I was looking back at this, Back in the late 80s, uh, Linux was just coming out. Um, Red Hat in 1993 really drove um, a robust enterprise uh, capability. And today you look at the value of Linux in the enterprise is obvious now. Um, same thing with carry grade Linux. And I think where we're at is a similar space with a lot of the cloud technologies, like OpenStack, which is one of the cornerstone foundations for a software-defined infrastructure. And so I think we're in the same place we were with the early stages of deployment of enterprise Linux as we are with OpenStack and as it's maturing and we're driving upstream capabilities. So uh, our collaboration and how we work together remains the same. It's just new projects that we're working on to uh, mature in the marketplace. Yeah, you, you talk about uh, software-defined data center and infrastructure, obviously that's widely deployed in sort of the web scale types of companies. What are you seeing that in, in the enterprise? How, how ready and mature are those companies and, and how are you guys helping to sort of accelerate that, uh, that maturity curve? Oh, it, it's, it's all across the spectrum. You see companies that are already doing that and they're getting a technology advantage. Uh, so we're seeing it already take hold in, in enterprises today and you're seeing others that are either not moving fast enough and are going to need to move faster or they'll get left behind. So we're absolutely seeing this take hold. There's, there's so much, the value proposition for that is so great, you can't be, it can't be ignored. Right. And so you know, you compute storage and network really need to be looked at in that software defined infrastructure and taking the best capabilities of each so that you can balance that workload depending on what you're driving in that environment. So absolutely we're seeing it take hold. It's, it, it, that debate, in my view, is, is over. It's yeah. really, it's how fast people are moving to yeah. it today. So Doug, Doug the, the pace of change keeps increasing. Uh, you know, in, in our careers, you know, Moore's Law has been one of those things that's been the driver as to what, how, how we keep pace of change. How is the virtuous cycle different from kind of the drumbeat of Moore's Law? Well, um, let me say, it's different in the sense that um, we're not pre predicting with uncertainty in our ability. Like, Moore's Law, uh, it was a law that we've been executing against for, for generations. 
and it's very systematic execution. Whereas I look at the virtual cycle, is there's a, you know, and you always hate to say this, but there's a hockey stick occurring. Because like I said in my talk, right now the virtual cycle is being, the momentum is being generated by people. The data that generates by humans. The, the, the statistics I shared was that on average, uh, the data generated by people is about 650 megabytes of data per day. Uh, in 2020, Cisco did this pretty uh, interesting survey and said that's going to go up to 1.5 gigabytes. Um, and so you can see that trajectory occurring, which is going to drive that cycle. But what's fascinating is there's data shows that 47% of the 50 billion connected devices are going to be things, machines. And the data that's generated by those machines outstrips any human's ability to generate data. So like a smart connected hospital, 3,000 gigabytes per day. A connected autonomous car, 4,000 gigabytes. A airplane, 40,000. Factories, 1 million gigabytes wow. a day. So you're going to see a tremendous uptick in amount of data, and the data centers need to mine that for value and, and give that services back to those devices. So I actually see an acceleration of the momentum, and that's why we made the shifts that we did at Intel to be, be a part of that, help accelerate it, as well as intercept that. Yeah, we, we look at the announcements this morning, containers, 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 containers. What's, what's Intel's take on, on how fast that's growing and what are the things that you're putting in the technology to make it you know, accelerate like virtualization did? Yeah, we see container technology becoming very, very relevant. Uh, there's a lot of experimentation. Deployments are obviously happening, but there's a lot of experimentation. Yeah. Um, we're looking at it as a solution to multiple problems. Uh, first of all, we actually invest in what we call the Clear Container Project, which yes. is what we use to drive innovation uh, upstream mm -hmm. to then be deployed downstream in distributions of it. So we do things like hardening and security is one of the things that we did. Virtualization, right. we added to containers. So we, we do a lot of good work upstream in our, in our test environment, our innovation environment called uh, Clear Containers. But I talked also about um, when it comes to OpenStack, there is some... Um, challenges with the scaling OpenStack. And so looking at technologies like containers to help us. Kubernetes um, and Kubernetes other things, yeah. and others to take and um, containerize the management plane to deploy uh, more robustly and seamlessly OpenStack. So it's, you're going to see technologies um, commingling yeah. as we build solutions and that's a great example of it. Yeah, today. that's great, that's great. Um, what is, is Intel, you know, you talk about the shift, I think for a lot of people they thought about, you know, Intel's in the data center, everyone talks about it, it's, you're running things on x86 in the data center. Beyond, you know, for those of us that live in the data center, the shift feels like well, that's what you've been doing. Where do you see the investments going in terms of the, the new investments, the new types of things? Is it, is it to, because mobile is driving, is it because IoT is driving, is there, you know, certain sort of future trends we should be looking at from Intel as to what's driving your investments and your strategy? Well, I think you, you, you already know. I mean, yeah. the cloud is becoming a, you know, the enterprise has always been and will be an area we've invested in and right. are, are very, very uh, uh, mature and innovation has continued. So that, that will not change. Yeah. But we see the cloud obviously growing rapidly and so our investments with the cloud, uh, both public and private, is critical right. to ensure that we deliver the best in value to the public cloud providers as well as allow and provide capabilities for enterprises to deliver cloud services in their environment. And if we look at the compute uh, elements, uh, one of the things that we've uh, looked at is how do we ensure that we deploy a, a much easier to enable infrastructure. And that's where the Intel rack scale architecture comes in is to really put that pieces together in a rack scale architecture that gives a much more manageable environment for, uh, for that environment. So yeah. we're evolving in those areas from a software perspective where I focus it's all the same things. It's, it's innovating upstream to mature OpenStack, uh, over to Hadoop to ensure that we accelerate our capabilities in, in those environments. Right. So we're looking at all the different um, parts of the data center, whether it's, whether it's containers, yeah. uh, all the you different. Make, you make strategic investments with certain partners to try and accelerate things. We'll continue to see those things happen as well, you think? Yeah, we do two things. We, we invest to ensure that the technology that we're building into our platforms are deployed in these environments. Yeah. So that's what I have resources doing, which is working in the community with these players in the, in the ecosystem, yeah. whether they're open source or not, to ensure that their, their solution takes advantage of our latest technologies. 
but we also see technologies that will help accelerate that environment, and so we'll invest in those strategically as okay. well. Yeah. yeah. So, Doug, yeah, I, I want to give you the final word because okay. uh, talking about that, you know, Intel sits at a space. Not only do you have visibility into the adoption of all those technologies by, you know, all the partnerships and, and where your products go, um, but also you've been an accelerant for lots of products. I think back to, you know, virtualization, you know, hooks that are there, uh, the things you're doing on security. So, um, you know. Talked about so many things here from containers and OpenStack. What should we look for from, from Intel, uh, from your partnership with Red Hat and beyond for uh, some of these technologies and when we reach the tipping point uh, for yeah. them? I mean, I think um, there's no new news. I think yeah. you're going to see us continue to evolve our, our mainstream roadmap on the Xeon platform. We continue to um, drive more and more innovation. Uh, innovations where we integrate into that platform. So we're going to continue to drive that as we go forward. Our investments in the data center around things uh, we haven't even talked about, but we will be talking a lot more about, is deep learning and machine learning. And the investments we're going to make there to ensure, I mean, all, all that's running on Intel architecture today, and so you're going to see us invest dr dramatically uh, in that space to ensure that uh, we accelerate the ability for people to take advantage of our technology in deep learning and machine learning. Uh, you're going to see that in, um, in the PC side, we're going to continue to invest there. We, we can't lose sight of that. There's a lot of value in the PC. We're going to continue to invest there. We see growth in things like gaming, uh, workstation capabilities. All those things are continuing to grow in the, in the PC segment as well, our two-in-one solutions. So you're going to see us pick strategic areas where software can really make a difference, where our investment can actually help accelerate that. And I think the space to watch next is the the deep learning machine learning where we're really uh, in a right position to invest. All right, right. well, Doug Fisher from Intel. Yeah. Unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it there and catch up with you at, at another show. Um, stay tuned, we're actually going to have the world premiere launch of The Open Patient, which is a documentary film produced by Red Hat in their open source series. Uh, so please stay tuned to watch that, and we'll be back with lots more coverage here of theCUBE from Red Hat Summit 2016.